Good morning, good afternoon everyone. My name is Russ and I would love to welcome you all guys on our Friday update here on Datadash. Last week we've been speaking a lot about Federal Reserve game plan and overall about macro. If you missed that video, I really recommend to go uh, check the link in the description above and understand for yourself why those scenarios, those two scenarios within the catch-22 that Fed is currently going through are so important for understanding the current game plan in crypto. However, today I would really love to focus more on crypto. I understand that we are in a very particular setup right now. I would believe that the power of three, which is the bullish manipulation setup, can definitely play in a number of altcoins, of course. We also gonna cover the Bitcoin dominance, which is still quite bullish, the Bitcoin chart itself, and I'll give you several of my favorite altcoin setups. On top of that, I would also like to show you why I went long yesterday in the private Telegram group for those who are subscribed to the Datadash newsletter, why I made this decision. For me, it's very important that you actually understand what is the logic behind. So we're going to cover absorption, exhaustion, and a few of other setups that I love to use during my decision making. With all that said, let's go. Before we start and go into the today's chart, I would like you to remind what was my game plan for the last week. Let's have a quick look. So this move is absolutely not confirmed by the spot buyers. The spot buyers prefer to actually distribute above the level of 70. And then what happens, as you can see here on the chart previously, we're just having those uh, $1,000-$2,000 puke candles in a matter of 15 minutes. And that has been the case multiple times here and here and here. So this is not a sustained move I would be enjoying uh, actually watching. So for me, first of all, as soon as we fully accept above the range highs here and reclaim it, there is no long. The second thing, when speaking about alts, I really do not like how Bitcoin dominance has been creeping up. Uh, it is very, very likely that this level sooner or later will be taking. You see, guys, I've been very cautious and that was for a reason. We had aggressive buyers stepping in and the upper part of the range and the results you've been all witnessing the last weekend, especially on alts where we had 30-35% correction in multiple and 20-25 on others. And moreover on Bitcoin, where we are in a higher 50s, lower 60s right now, but just a week ago, we were at 70,000 plus. So how was it possible for me to see that? Well, what I've been looking normally is the open interest and the cumulative volume delta. Let's go into CoinAnalyze once again together and see where we are now. I keep all the settings open here on purpose so that you can copycat my setup. This is absolutely free and what I would recommend to look at here is the divergences between the cumulative volume delta on spot and the price. In this case, for example, Ethereum, but we're going to look in a Bitcoin as well in a second. What do we see here? We see an uptrend in spot and we see the downtrend in price. This is called the lack of participation setup. And what does that mean, the lack of participation? It means that there is less sellers on the lower prices and the people who would like to transact are getting exhausted. Normally, when that exhaustion happens, price tends to take an opposite direction of where it was going prior. So we have this rapid bounce. I had amazing fills. Let's actually project them on the screen. And there you see uh, what's important for me as the trader is to make money in any environment without being at the mercy of the market. Whatever market does going up or going down or moreover going sideways, I'd like to have a certainty around, you know, my p &L. So with that said, exhaustion is a very important setup I would be looking at. You might ask, actually, what's the cumulative volume delta? 
Well, this is quite simple. That's not at all the rocket science. Cumulative volume delta, or in other words, CVD, is the metric which is used in trading to analyze the market dynamics by tracking the net difference between buying and selling volumes over specific time frames. In other words, you take all the volume with the active buys or market buys and you subtract all the active volume or market buys representing the sell and then you have your delta so it can be positive or negative in that case when we are looking on a theorem chart and we see that the lower number of participants are entering here at the market it means they are not interested to sell and the delta is getting more and more positive so people are actually more buying than selling in those prices and the market would soon reiterate the second type of setup it is actually working quite opposite and it's called absorption so what happens during the absorption is for example we had this liquidation week on the 13th of april with a particular uh, cvd and then our cvd have been going all the way lower for multiple days but price was going higher and price could not push any more down what does that mean that means that the limit orders that are staying passively are actually absorbing all the aggressive market sales and there are multiple participants on those level between 2800 and 3000 on ethereum that would digest all the spookiness of the market and all the emotional sell that happened due to geopolitical news and events so when those things would settle down the price would bounce up and that is why i was looking for longs for the last several days where everyone was getting emotional i have multiple friends calling me and saying the things can go much worse i'm selling and you should too and i was like no way what was that trade and where i would get actually interested to get involved i covered in my short yesterday let's have a quick look the march low I'm seeing a very strong bid on Bitfinex and Bitcoin and multiple CVD commodity volume data divergences. So if that bid is going to resolve to the upside, the shorts will be absolutely obliterated. And first stop 63, second stop 67. No need to get involved just yet. I would consider the swipe into the March low around New York open. And then your invalidation point is a couple percent down. Your upside potential is 67,000. You see, I was patiently waiting for my trade to get filled. That did not happen yesterday during the New York Open, but it happened today during the Asian session. Normally, Asian sessions are characterized with the lower liquidity, and this is why the volatility and the moves are more drastic. Normally, when we are speaking about Hong Kong, Toronto session, uh, Aust Australian Open, those are sessions that do not have as much volume as London Stock Exchange or New York Stock Exchange. So it's easier for both market maker and retail participants to move the price. And it takes sometimes just several million dollars on a ex particular exchange to move the price by 2 and 3%. And this is the reason why I was waiting for my later 59,000 bits to be filled. And then you see guys where we are just a few hours later. Swipe. Swipe, swipe, we were taking all the stop losses of the previous traders and we bounced in a matter of several hours to the levels I've been indicating in my yesterday short. We are not yet at 67,000, but we are at around 64.5. Let's have a look meanwhile on the liquidation levels on the high block capital. The liquidation levels are those prices where the huge amount of the leverage traders would be forced to sell or to liquidate their positions and this is why normally they're used to understand how far the market maker is excited to extend the price in order to collect those liquidations and if we would look on those charts very often we realize that for example there is an amount of liquidity roughly related to 500 million dollars sitting let's say at 2800 dollars for ethereum but if we would go on any particular service uh, we'll see that it only cost 50 million dollars to push the prices there due to the low amount of beads 
currently. So what market maker is often tends to do, and that's what people call geopolitical news, a certain spookiness, and sometimes those things come hand in hand, very well planned time-wise, like this morning with the Israel strike on Iran, those things come hand in hand and market maker is able to collect $500 million liquidation, just putting in $50 million in the game. So 10 to 1 risk reward, not so bad. Who is paying for those retail traders who get over leverage using 100x, 50x, or just keeping their leverage position there for months without really having a particular game plan. So with that explanation, um, let's have a look meanwhile where we are in terms of those levels. Let's start with Ethereum. On the three months time frame, uh, we can see that there is a huge amount of liquidity, which is roughly between 2,500 and 2,800. Does it mean that we're gonna swipe the previous week? I would say not certainly, because if you see the darker yellow, we already took the most of liquidity that was there present previously. Or if we are looking on the seven day chart that we actually see that much more liquidation are sitting towards 3,400. For me, the resolution is rather towards upside and soon on the Ethereum Bitcoin chart, on the yield chart, on the Euro USD chart, I'll show why. But now let's have a quick look on Bitcoin. On the monthly time frame, we'll see there's a lot of liquidation sitting around 55,000. And also on the three monthly time frame, we see that those are skewed towards $50,000. This is the reason why, guys, for those who are subscribed to the Data Dash newsletter in my group, we set up the stinky bid around 51, 52,000 in case a certain geopolitical escalation from Iranian side, for example, would be triggered. Then we are happy to catch all those liquidations and our entries would be in someone's liquidation unfortunately but that's the that's the game and let's be ready for that i'm not saying that those beats are necessarily to get filled but as i've seen on the previous weekend that's my performance for the last uh, week most of the people lost a bunch of money i made a lot of money and that's the reason why i always keep the stinky bids in place because we are in a bull market and we use a lot of leverage the open interest tends to really go high and that is where we need to act all right, enough of liquidation levels. Let's go straight into the charts. So here, first of all, I'd love to point out that the number of put-to-call ratios related to all these geopolitical events and a bunch of other fear that has been circulating around the markets has not been seen since almost half a year. The VIX normally represents the ratio of put-to-call. So higher is the VIX, bigger number of puts, put option contracts or uh, anticipation that the market should go down. It means that people who buy put, the retail, the retail traders, are normally having them expiring worthless. And this is beneficial for the market maker who are selling those puts to the retail people. So with all this geopolitical news, there is an extra layer to that. Uh, when retail are loading up on puts, you normally expect the market to have a slight reversal. I'm not saying we're going up only from here. I'm saying that first of all, those puts have to expire worthless by the end of Friday. And this, in my opinion, gives a significant breather to the market. What I'm also looking at here on EURUSD chart is first of all, the retest of those zone of 0.17. From there, we will decide either we are able to accept in this range and go all the way to 1.9 or we bounce back all the way to 1.5. Of course, in the mid term, that would be quite dreadful and quite not nice for the risk on assets, including altcoins, first of all, but Bitcoin as well. However, we are still, in my opinion, up for a little 0.71% bounce. That, of course, would further on confirm this DXY correction that I've been mentioning in the stream yesterday. As you remember, Euro contributes the most to the DXY basket. And this is why this will be the first foreign exchange uh, pair that I'm looking at in the beginning of my day. The other ones I covered in the previous video on Friday. And one of them is also Japanese yen to Australian dollar. Remember, Nick was showcasing how uh, Japanese yen is starting 
to move against the US dollar and what kind of sentiment that can bring to the market. If you haven't seen, I recommend going check the next video from uh, this week. But coming back to our outlook for this week, I also have been looking at the yields and this is potentially an opportunity for us to call that 5% zone as a resistance. This is quite yet unclear on a daily time frame if the yields are gonna bounce down. If they would, that for sure would give a breather to the stocks and thus also to Bitcoin. In my opinion, we might have a break of market structure here. We're starting to print the lower low and if we bounce from here, and the tra trajectory would look somehow like that because also psychologically this 5% on um, two year yield is something um, where a lot of trading and transaction would happen. When we look at 10 year yields, the situation is even more clear here. Yields, hopefully for us, for the crypto holders are going to go down, right? One more thing I'm looking at here is this beautiful daily candle that we are printing on Aussie dollar versus Japanese yen. So yes, there was this certain fear in the market today related to the missile attack. However, as you can see, those deep has been bought impressively quick. And that means that the market is valuing the risk on attitude today because Australian dollar is normally representing the risk on and Japanese yen is representing the risk of attitude. On the other hand side, Bitcoin dominance is still quite bullish. And if you remember guys, last Friday I said, it is highly probable that we're gonna break the 55% range and go all the way towards 60s. That does not directly mean that altcoins are gonna dump further from here, especially if we have a nice Bitcoin rally into halving, which is about to happen slightly 20 hours from now on the 20th of April. With that said, Ethereum to Bitcoin relative strength chart is looking like it's getting more and more ready to attack this 4.8% resistance that so far we couldn't break through. I see we start printing more and more divergences. Does it mean we go straight ahead up from here? Not necessarily. We can come back to the range, my yellow line of 0046. Please keep in mind on the daily, we are still not looking anyhow bullish. The market structure is still quite bearish. So it's just a question of, you know, if we're gonna sw swipe here or we're gonna probably find a way to accept. But with that said, total two and total three look like a very strong bullish engulfing candle that has swiped all those lows and about to close above that order block. So if you start accepting above that order block, then the way from here is up. And I normally like that setup. The same applies to total two. It's very similar, despite Ethereum was quite underperforming, I accumulated a huge amount of ETH in the area of 2.8 to 3000 USDT. When it comes to the Bitcoin chart, what are you gonna be looking at? First of all, if you're not yet in the trade from that swipe, as from my short video yesterday, then I would be looking at this order block. Why this order block? Because this is the bullish order block that has caused the break of structure. This is the high that is actually higher high comparing to the previous high. So I would look for a quick tap back into this order block and then the potential reward reversal. So my risk to reward, it will be something around, something around four to one. So I would like to beat 62.1 and expect that the price would not see a drop below 61 with the ability to tap into the previous resistance zone of 67 or 68,000. 
why I am thinking that Bitcoin, despite this extended move, would actually go down? Well, because we have the volume candle here, or the candle with an abnormally high volume. That means that for someone, for you, for example, to go long on the other side of the trade, there is a market maker and the market maker was forced to open the short position. So, of course, it can just happen that we create here this demand anticipation and Bitcoin continues higher. But I would believe that during the New York Open today, market maker would potentially try to recap some of his short positions to unload them, to close them and a break even. And when people will start taking the profits, market maker would actually load up the longs and Bitcoin would continue its move upwards. Taking into account the fact that we are having also the previous vector candle here, that was this bullish hammer, you might want to give yourself a tiny bit of a leeway and put your stop loss slightly down towards 60,000. It would still provide you a nice risk to reward ratio of three, but it would not shake you out of the trade if that volume on the bullish candle has to be recovered as well. So coming back to the larger chart, what is important for me here, you can scale, in my opinion, anywhere between 60 and 63,000, expecting the move later into the weekend towards 67, 68. And this is also due to the bullish market structure that we are start starting to form since our liquidation cascades and drops during last Saturday. What I really like here is the Ethereum chart, not despite if BTC has a particular strength, but purely from the market psychology dimension. And I'm eyeing here the PO3 setup, or in other words, power of three. Power of three is characterized by three moves. First of all, is an accumulation where a market maker is building up his position. But in order to make sure that the train is going to leave empty, all the passengers of the train or retail traders have to be firstly kicked out. And this is what we call manipulation. When people are trading ranges, less sophisticated traders are clearly seeing that this is the sign of us losing the range. They are not familiar so much with multiple psychological tricks such as you all remember, for example, Wyckoff distribution pattern. What happens afterwards is the distribution. And this is the strong pump in order to clean the previous highs because there is also a significant number of shorters after imagine this long parabolic uptrends. I guess we went to the error sign, the higher 80s. So obviously it is not uh, is no brainer that a lot of people actually started to short from here so they are feeling very complacent and very relaxed in their shorts. And this is why I anticipating that move that where we can swipe 40,000 US dollars per Ethereum and push the price much higher from here. For me, the move from the current values can be as much as of 35 to 40%. What's particularly good, in my opinion, about other alts is, for example, looking at the chart of Aave, you see that this manipulation order block is separated much, much further from our accumulation range. And if you onboard right risk management and the right trader mindset being quite strict about your point of invalidation and not pursuing the losing trade, then your risk to reward ratio is going to be even higher than with Ethereum. Why so? Because it is just enough for you for the daily hammer candle of today to get invalidated. In my opinion, you don't even need to wait for accepting into that long liquidation cascade because those are drastic events where price time opportunity is completely out of scope. You don't need to uh, wait for those in order for your stop loss to get hit. Simply say, I think that today's 
Hammer Vector Candle based on the Euro USD bounce, based on the VIX recovery to the downside, based on the DXY weakness, based on other things that we covered today, including the fact that S&P 500 and NASDAQ have been continuously oversold for the last five days. Once again, I'm not a big fan of the world oversold. If you're getting the geopolitical events triggered, things can stay in the lower daily RSIs for days and weeks. But as soon as Israel is going to celebrate a Passover, I don't think that they would let their citizens basically miss one of the most important Israeli holidays. I believe that this weekend towards Monday when the Passover is going to happen and then Tuesday which is the Tesla earnings important important day for the markets we might have several days of actually more peaceful scenario depending of course how Iran would respond and in my opinion you would be able to open at least that's what I'm doing several altcoin trades targeting the previous highs. Your risk to reward ratio here is very good. In my opinion, also please don't just mark it by all in here. Get yourself a couple of uh, entries through the day when you can scale a little bit lower. If given, if you remember my Bitcoin plans, so of course, alts are gonna get retraced as well if Bitcoin is going down to 64 or 63,000 from here. Keep that in mind. There's no need, you know, to feel all your position in one market buy. I keep repeating this all the time. I use particularly for those at the Teal Street, which allows me to scale automatically through. Um, multiple positions you can do it also manually you can have three four trades uh limit limit buys per day for those you obviously don't need to over complicate things and once we lose this daily you are able to enter guys please don't ask me can i do that on other altcoins yes you can you can you can do the same on filecoin you can see how this uh, daily candle it's printing strong hammer. You can do that on Ethereum if you are a little bit more cautious and you'd like to play higher market cap plays. You can also do those on the smaller coins. In our group, we enter the trade on hook. But uh, once again, you do you. Uh, the structure is the same on all the alts. It really doesn't matter. Just stick to your high conviction plays. And that's my recommendation. What is also super important to keep in mind in the first several years of your trading journey, please do not trade with your entire capital until you fully can be confident that wherever the market does, your win rate, your trade, your risk to reward is allowing you to beat the market in any conditions. Until this is done, I fully recommend to trade with the smallest part of your portfolio ever, if not paper trades. I know for some people it will not be possible because they like to sense the real volatility and the real dollars behind this trade. Nevertheless, what I really recommend to do is to use the power of compounding. What Albert Einstein called the eighth miracle of the world really does work when you do not have to pay the tax of any trade you do. So the sponsor of today's video is iTrust Capital that allows you to open an IRA account and to move your existing uh, IRA into iTrust, roll over your 401k or anything else to take tax advantage. And with this account, you can buy and sell crypto, you can trade, you can acquire gold and silver 24-7, uh, no monthly fees, very, very low arbitrage and costs. And on top of that, they're giving $100 for all the new signups. With all that said, guys, I recommend you all to exercise caution. Do not over trade, especially until you're very confident. And I'd love to see you all in the upcoming week. Be safe.